Hi there, Tom from the tree line here. What I thought we'd take a look at today is what I'm going to call the Bushcraft Starter Kit. Now, that's a collection of items that uh, you can very easily acquire or chances are you may already have in the house somewhere um, and they'll be useful to you if you're planning to spend a bit more time out in the woods with the kids. We do some outdoor living skills, take advantage of this lovely autumn weather Perhaps you're a forest school teacher and you want to acquire some of your own items uh, for running sessions yourself. Perhaps you're just someone who's seen some bushcraft videos and thought, I'd like to give that a try. Um, all too often, these same videos show people using what appears to be really beautiful, expensive kit. And, and that can be a bit off-putting. I'd be the first to agree with that. And for some of the sort of, you know, the old school traditionalists out there, I totally get as well that there's you know something very nice about using quality tools using them owning them I get it if that's not an option at this time you want to take a bit of time to deal in then stay with I'm going to show you some uh, much more pocket friendly alternatives to those items uh, we're going to talk through them real quick uh, and then we're going to actually use them put them to the test see if out here in this lovely bit of uh, forest we can't set ourselves up a tidy weed day camp using stuff that yeah chances are you already own or if you don't you could easily put your hands on it okay so stay with me uh, we're going to take a look at the basic kit now okay okay you're going to start uh, over here with the axe I guess in no particular order this one is uh, a cheap um, DIY B&Q style hatchet can't remember where I got it now um, it is not a thing of beauty look at that it's got a rubber handle uh, it's even got a warning to wear goggles uh, but a bit of time with a sharpening stone has given this a really useful edge add to that the fact that it's virtually indestructible um, and it's going to be a handy piece of kit to have in your bag we'll, we'll put it to the test in a minute you be the judge a saw and you're probably thinking oh my god that's actually straight out of B&Q as well uh, yes it is um, I've fashioned for it a um, cover made from an old real estate sign. That means that it's not going to slice through my uh, rucksack. This one has a low TPI or teeth per inch count, giving it quite an aggressive blade. Yes, it's short, which means it's going to be quite tough. To, you don't get a long stroke on it. But for our purposes today, it's going to be ideal. If we were cutting down firewood for uh, two days or a, a long winter overnight or out here, this wouldn't be the right thing. For a quick campfire, for you and the rest of your party, uh, it's going to be absolutely ideal. Again, we'll see. This is a Mora knife. Take a look at the Mora of Sweden. Um, very cheap. Uh, and for some reason they are excellent steel and again with a bit of time with the sharpening stone you can bring this up to an absolutely surgical edge these things are not pretty definitely they come in a range of colors though pretty much indestructible uh, I think 12 quid Amazon this uh, money well spent uh, a good piece of kit if not a beautiful one. Oh, just going back yeah you notice that I wrapped the hatchet in a piece of old uh, canvas you could use an old t-shirt anything to stop it going through the side of your pack or actually causing an injury to uh, to somebody pair of old leather gloves uh, always useful especially for breaking up the wood by hand fairly self-explanatory here's something you will most certainly already own this is a, a small day pack what is it 25 liters or something multiple pockets just like the bag that the kids take to, to school it doesn't matter if it's in combat and survival green sneaky beaky black or shaped like a minion in bright yellow if you can get all these items into it it was the right thing for you to take a tin cup fairly self-explanatory a bottle of water this was lemonade before the bottle cost me nothing these are pretty tough they'll hold all your water for uh, for your needs and when you're done with it you can responsibly recycle it you don't have to spend anything on a sort of beautiful steel flask they're nice to have but you know what this works just fine a bit of string always useful thousands of uses won't discuss them here you can probably guess at one or two of them this is always in the bottom of my rucksack 
fire lighting materials. This one matches two disposable lighters kept in a wee plastic bag. I know what you're thinking, oh my god, he hasn't got a flint and steel, or he hasn't got this, or he hasn't got your old friend the Bedouin fire blanket. Well, do you know what? The hell with that. These things work every time. Lighter like this will go through the washing machine and still function. <laughs> yeah, it does work. The matches, if you keep them dry, will always look after you. Some of history's greatest explorers have carried matches of this very brand. Good enough for them, good enough for you. Absolutely sure of it. Here's something I made myself out of an old um, pound store tea caddy that sits on your work surface. Um, I cut a slot in it and I drilled some holes and put this wire bale in and then I put a wee wooden handle on top. I got three of these for five quid, I think. I've used this many times over the years. Absolutely spot on, no problems with that at all. Here's something a little bit more straightforward. This is a hobo style uh, water boiler. It's a tin can with a bit of wire threaded through it. I challenge you to make one of these. Couldn't be much more straightforward. Works every time. This is a tarp and these come in all sort of uh, materials and sizes. Uh, this is a sort of mid-range one, but you can get poly tarp material like this green stuff. Uh, again, in your DIY store, very cheaply with grommets in the corners. Doesn't weigh much, absolutely priceless to have in your kit because if it rains, you can keep the whole team dry. And if you've got the kids with you, you don't have a mutiny on your hands. Uh, you keep them dry and they'll stay with you. Um, piece of uh, <coughs> blue rope uh, to hang the tarp with. I always use bright blue rope. You can just see it better. Nothing uh, worse than walking into this at throat height when it's strung up nice and tight in the trees. Last thing you're looking at here is this green poly tarp. That's the base of an old tent which I found abandoned. I cut it out and it's a good thing to, to sit on when the ground's wet. Easy to forget that but uh, you know when you think oh you know shelter, fire, this, that and the other take something to sit on too it's going to make your life a little bit more comfortable okay thanks for bearing with we're going to set up camp now and we're going to see how these items actually perform in a real life test okay time to put the saw to the test uh, on some of this timber that was lying around before uh, you say anything <laughs> the forestry commission uh, who managed this piece of woodland used this area some time ago for chainsaw training they took down swathes of timber and they left it all here. They didn't remove it, they didn't replant it, they didn't really do anything with it, they just chopped it down. Uh, it's all still here. This is what we're using. Yeah, it's a little bit damp. Uh, it's not ideal, but it's going to be an excellent test for the saw. Okay, that wasn't so bad. Uh, really, for our purposes today, this is as thick as we want to be taking down. Like I said, we're going to be out here all night and we need to build up a good stock of firewood for a freezing cold winter's night. Yeah, please don't come out here with something like this. Use a good bow saw with a, a new blade. As you can see, that wasn't too tough. Uh, I'm going to take a few more sections off here. I usually work to about 18 inches. Then we use the axe to, uh, to split them up. Okay, time for the axe. Let's see if we can split this up down the middle. Expose the dry stuff inside, most importantly. be better. The axe has done its work. Let's have another go at that. Not very tidy. Okay, a little bit better. Crack that neatly down the middle. Really important with this sort of wood this time of year when it's wet on the outside. Open it up. Sorry, 
firm grip. And the knotted nature can make prizing it apart a little bit tricky. It's just knocking it in. So we're down. There we go. Dry-ish wood exposed on the inside. I'll do the rest and then we'll talk again in a minute. Okay, I'm going to want to take down some of these uh, thinner pieces as feather sticks. Absolutely vital piece of uh, fire lighting process. Um, I'm not going to sort of major on that. You've probably seen videos. Uh, I've even got one myself, but we'll put the knife to the test all the same. Yeah, no real surprises here. The uh, the Mora is a sharp knife. It's a cheap one. It's easy to acquire, uh, and it makes a good feather stick. I'm going to need to make a few of these because the wood's a bit damp. And I'll come back to that presently. Okay, so that's our camp set up. Yeah, um, didn't show you how I put the tarp up. I've done other videos on that. Chances are you probably know how to do it yourself. Uh, I set the fire up um, and I always set the pot hanger up before I light anything. Always saves time. Very simple arrangement. Back peg here with a forked stick there and just something long here with a notch cut in it to hold the pot. My ground sheet's down. If it rains now, I'll be dry. It may even protect the fire a little bit. Obviously, I don't want that directly under the, uh, the awning of the tarp. Let's light it up um, and, we'll, uh, and we'll round off this video. Okay, just for the heck of it, I'm gonna use the, uh, the lighter. I mean, it's pretty horrible things, but do you know what, they really work. You don't need to get a ferro rod or anything complex. And you can just keep that on as long as your thumb will take it. Wood's a bit damp, but uh, yeah, we'll give it a moment to do its thing. the kettle boiling. Cool as. All seems to have worked. Okay well that's been the uh, the bushcraft starter kit which I hope you'll agree uh, seems to have worked just fine for our purposes. No Swedish steel, no hand stitched leather, no um, nifty little fire lighting gadgets, all off the shelf, easy to find stuff that chances are you might already own. Um, any questions, love to hear your comments as well, um, bang them in below and uh, hopefully it won't be so long before we, uh, before we speak again. Okay folks, thanks for watching and uh, see you again soon.